So I've been an avid budgeter for my entire adult life. And after my long-term budgeting app meant shut down, I was devastated. And I thought that I'd never find another good app again. And then I went on using and trying out budgeting apps like You Need a Budget, Rocket Money, and other budgeting apps until I fell on the gym that is Monarch Money. As a eight month user of the software, I'm gonna break down everything so that you can decide for yourself if it's something that meets your needs as a budgeter. Let's get it. So when you first log into the Monarch Money website, it'll bring you immediately to the dashboard, which basically breaks down, you know, all the things the software has to offer. And it's nice because it's very much good looking aesthetically, but you can also come and customize exactly what you want on your home page and organize it the way you want. So for example, if you want to include your transactions on a home page and take off your net worth and put your spending trends up top, you know, it'll completely shift around how you want your page. And it's also worth noting that this website on desktop is basically the exact same, you know, format, what you'll see um, on your mobile app as well. So it's good that it has that continuity amongst, you know, the desktop as well as the mobile app, you know, so you're not trying to figure it out for both. So moving on to the meat of things, we'll start with accounts. And this is probably a top tier feature of this and a must have feature for any budgeting app and that's data connectivity, the ability to basically put all your accounts in one location and make it autonomous in a sense. And that's what Monarch Money offers. It, how it has many um, forms and ways that you can be able to sync all your bank accounts and investment accounts all in one place, you know, and that, you know, sets it apart from other ones that make you put in everything manually and other things I love about the data connectivity is not only it allows you to connect your banking credit accounts and your investment accounts, but it also allows you to connect to Zillow so you can get the property value of your home. It allows you to connect your VIN number for your car so you can determine the value of it and it kind of keeps up with the value of your car in respect to, you know, the loan you have on your car if you have one. And it also allows you to manually connect accounts so that if it, for example, you have accounts that aren't you know, necessarily accounted for in any institution, you can come and kind of create it yourself. For example, for all my sports betting accounts, I came and created its own line for that. So that is great. And with just my synchronicity amongst my account, this has been a very efficient feature for me. I haven't had much issues with it. Uh, Occasionally, I will have to come in and resync things because, say, for example, you see my thrift savings plan, it hasn't been synced in 11 days, but you know, I could easily take 10 to 15 seconds and be able to resync that and get updated numbers. The only issue I ever had with this is being able to connect my Nailnet account. I ran into a couple issues there, being able to keep that connected, but other than that, everything with data connectivity has been top tier for me. Moving on to transactions, like I said, all your accounts auto syncs and therefore all your transactions auto sync. And I think transactions and just this website, this page in general, and this is consistent throughout the entire software, is that it's very visually appealing. You have all these nice little emojis for the specific, uh, you know, categories for the budgets you have. It has, you know, your logos for those popular institutions that you'll use a lot. And I found that it's very easy to be able to backtrack and find any kind of transactions that you look for, you know, historically throughout time, you know, to be able to go back and find those things and track those things down. So another feature I love, just very minor, but it's very important is that each transaction you're allowed to split into multiple different, you know, categories. Say if you were to go to gro grocery shopping at Walmart, you could also break that down into house supplies as well as groceries. So that's just great to have. And then you could also come in here and add any receipt that you, you know, want to each transaction. Say if you wanted to, you know, just keep up with all your receipts in one place for when it's time to do taxes, or if you are doing any business stuff, you can kind of keep up with all your receipts all in one location. So that's great to have. And also a unique feature to Monarch Money, which I found is that you can kind of create rules so that you won't have to continue to come in here and edit and modify your transactions to put them in the right categories. But you can create rules essentially to make sure that all your categories automatically file where you want them to go without you having to come 
and manually doing it every single time. For me, any budgeting app that makes it easier to budget is a great budgeting app. So moving on to the cash flow tab, and this again is just so visually appealing in the sense that, you know, it's so easy to read the information that you need to read. And my favorite feature on this cash flow tab is hands down the skanky diagram. I love, I absolutely love the way it breaks down all my expenses in categories and kind of gives it in this beautiful, beautiful diagram so that I can be able to, you know, go in and kind of see how everything is shaking out, you know, from a monthly standpoint, from a quarterly standpoint, and, you know, from a yearly standpoint, so that you can kind of look at all your expenses being broken down and where exactly everything is going. I absolutely love this diagram. It's so user friendly, visually appealing, and it makes me just want to budget more. And moving quickly on to a beta feature that they're trying to introduce and it's reports. I honestly, I don't use this at all because it's kind of very redundant to the cash flow tab. It kind of breaks down all your expenses for the month, the quarter, the year. Um, and that's something that's already offered in the cash flow tab. Um, I assume in the future, they're probably trying to make it more expansive and give you a lot more feedback and what's going on. But for right now, it's pretty redundant to what you're already getting. So I don't have any additional feedback there. So moving on to the budget tab. And again, it is very, very user friendly and very fully customizable in the sense where you can come in and create, you know, the budget in any way you want. And that's pretty standard for any budget app. But again, I think Monarch Money just makes it very easy to use. Some cool little features for these that I necessarily don't get the most out of is that it has a forecast feature in the sense that it could say, OK, this is what you're spending now for August. This is what you're spending for September. This is what you're spending for October. Well, this is what we think you're going to be spending for November and December in these categories. So it kind of sets a baseline budget for you to kind of go off and you can adjust it accordingly. So instead of having to recreate or, or kind of assume things every single month, it kind of gives you a baseline based off the historical numbers that you have throughout your budget. And I've only been using this for eight months, but it's starting to kind of pick up on my uh, expense pattern. The only issue I've had with the budgeting app is kind of when I'm trying to put the budget for future months and I'm like very preemptive and trying to set a bu budget for the next month. It kind of screws up the budget for the current month if I'm not doing it exact and I haven't quite figured out how to get over that hurdle. But this is one issue I've run into and that's minor. So moving on to the reoccurring tasks and it's basically automatically and manually um, includes all expenses that they expect or you expect to have reoccurring every single month. And I think this is cool because it basically picks up on your patterns. Like I said, it's saying, hey, every month you're spending this on car insurance. So we're going to go ahead and add it in your reoccurring expenses. And it's nice because then it goes in and gives you notifications and says, hey, soon you're going to have a purchase for this amount for this transaction and kind of keeps you up to speed with that. This is a little finicky sometimes because it doesn't always accurately assumes it's a reoccurring expense. Sometimes it's something that you just happen to do back to back months around the same time. And it'll say, hey, this is a reoccurring expense. But it's good because you can come in again and be fully customizable and say, hey, this is not a reoccurring expense. So do not make it a reoccurring expense. So it's pretty simple in that aspect. So I love this tab as well. Then moving quickly on to your goals tab, I think this is nice just to keep track of everything, but it's, it's basically, you know, say set a goal. Where am I? Where am I going? What's the, my progress? I think the nice thing about this is it allows you to connect multiple accounts. So instead of you going in every single time and updating that goal, you can simply just connect it to certain accounts. So whenever you put money in those accounts, you're contributing towards that goal. And it's, again, a more hands off feature and making it easier and easier to budget. Moving on to the investments tab. This is an amazing, amazing tab because basically it's, it goes and takes everything that you're invested in, you know, based off your accounts, whether that's your retirement account, whether that's your fidelity account in my case. And it comes and puts it all up here and, and creates a portfolio for you across all your holdings. 
And then what it does from there is it sits and compares your holdings to the S&P 500. And as you can see, over the past three months, compared to the S&P 500, my portfolio isn't doing as well. So that's just great insight to have in regards to my investments that, you know, a lot of budgeting apps don't offer is like what exactly and how exactly is your portfolio performing in regards to what just the S&P 500 is doing, as well as the U.S. stocks and the U.S. bonds. And lastly, looking at the advice tab, this is honestly a tab I don't use because I'm very uh, emphatic and I'm very knowledgeable about the things I'm doing financially. So I don't need it as much. But basically, it's very it's pretty detailed. You basically go in and answer a bunch of questions on what are your priorities financially? What do you want to focus on and what's your mindset financially? And it creates recommendations for you based off what you desire for your financial uh, outlook on life. So I think it's great you know, for someone who just wants some guidance. So just touching on a couple of the features that Monarch Money offers that I didn't speak on initially, it has a very detailed collaboration aspect of it where you and your spouse or a loved one can go in and actually use this on one account together. That's dope because one, it'll give everyone a separate password and a separate account essentially to manage that. And it's not any extra cost for you and someone else to be on that together. And they pledge bank level security if that's very important for you to have your accounts and your finances all in one place that's a very secure place. And lastly, this doesn't matter to me either, but they have no ads throughout Monarch Money. And of course you want that, especially if you're paying the fee for using this, which is $100. I would expect it to not be any ads. So that's another dope feature. In general, I love Monarch Money because it, compared to other apps I've used. It's just very beautiful, beautifully designed site. It's very user friendly. It's very customizable to meet my needs. So let me know if Monarch Money meets your needs from the things I've talked about. Let me know if you like Monarch Money based off of what I was saying and like the video if I provided some kind of insight in decision making on whether or not you want to use Monarch Money. And lastly, I appreciate all the support that's coming to the page. The subscriber count is slowly going up. So if you like the content I'm putting out or you recommend any content that I could put out, comment, like, subscribe, and you know, I'll work to put that out because I only want to help you all. So be easy. Peace.